Hello, this is API Days Helsinki, and we have here Maria Garcia from Amadeus. And you wanted to share, or you had something to share with us about these weird times that we are living in, or some general life hack. How is it? Indeed. So we always try to look at the positive side, right, of, of everything. And to me, the most positive thing of these tough times that we're living is that I believe it has brought us closer uh, than ever. So you know how experts talk all the time about this social distancing? I want to believe that actually we have achieved the physical distancing, but we have discovered new ways to stay connected and to stay closer than ever. So in my case, I'm not only talking about all those uh, virtual coffees and beers with my work colleagues, or you know, those group of friends that you never had the time to meet because you are so busy. Uh, but here in Spain, as you know, we have been very heavily impacted. Mm -hmm and the isolation measures were quite tough. Um, so I think we have seen a very interesting phenomenon with our neighbors going on. Uh, usually you don't take the time to talk to the people who live in the same building. Actually, I know it was not my case. I was always too busy to do so. And the moment the lockdown started, we started to see a lot of people volunteering to help each other. Um, parties happening in the balconies with the neighbors <laughs> living in the same building. And the other day, actually, I, I had the, the pleasure to see a, a live concert, a spontaneous concert. So one of the neighbors was playing the guitar, someone else joined, started to sing, and more and more people were showing up. So I think the point here is that this has helped us to get to know some people who live close to us and to realize that we are sort of stronger together, right? And, and I hope this is one of those things that can remain uh, once that things improve. Yeah, so instead of commuting all the time and using our time for that, we are actually more <laughs> social, which is kind of weird, but that is absolutely. Perfect. But hey, take it away. I'm eager to hear your presentation. Perfect. So let's go for it. Have you ever tried to lead a new API initiative at your organization? If so, chances are you've heard objections like these ones. Do they sound familiar? <laughs> well, the truth is that setting APIs internally sometimes can be hard. And uh, the lack of buying is the thing that can keep your project the fastest. So how do you overcome organizational resistance to an API initiative? I'm Maria Garcia, and I lead the strategy at Amadeus for Developers. I've been working on our corporate open API program since the initial setup. And so today I will be sharing some stories from the trenches and some practical tips to get your stakeholders to yes. And so we look at some of the most common roadblocks that your API initiative may encounter, including competing business priorities, the organizational culture and structure, and the perceived risk. And we will, uh, I will be sharing some advice and some uh, recommendations about how to address those challenges. The solutions covered will include how to pitch the value of your APIs, how to set up the right team and governance to achieve alignment, and how to minimize risk. Some of these recommendations go beyond open APIs, and so you really can apply them to any API project that you may undertake. So let's see how you can guide your organization through that transformation one step at a time. Once you're ready to get your API initiative off the ground, the very first roadblock you may hit are competing business priorities. With so many projects out there just sort of waiting for management to choose from, it is likely like a jungle. So it is natural that the first question you must answer is, how, why we should bet on this initiative? Why APIs over something else? Uh, more than ever, your stakeholders uh, may be asking questions and saying things like, well, this is not the right time to embark on a transformational project. So um, how do you make your stakeholders see the value in uh, what you're doing? Well, the first step, simple as it sounds, is to tell them. You can build a compelling case and uh, make sure that you invest the right time in doing so. So in our case, because Amadeus is such a large organization, uh, launching an open API program involved talking to a lot of different stakeholders. So at the beginning of the project, we had to explain to them uh, what the program was, address their uh, concerns, 
and uh, also uh, influence. Now, I know meetings might not be the most exciting part of your job, but if there's something that can truly derail your project, that is a lack of buying at any level of the organization. So you can build a strong case by highlighting three ideas. One, the value of APIs in the current context. Two, the benefits of adopting uh, APIs for your organization. And three, and equally important, the risks of not doing so. So first, you can explain why the current context calls for um, increased agility and accelerated digital transformation, and why APIs play a key role as enablers of such transformation. We can learn a lot from history, and we know that in the past three major recessions, actually, 10% of the organizations came out stronger. So think about it for a moment. That means one out of 10 businesses benefit from them. Now, um, can't you guess who the winners were? Well, they were not uh, the businesses that were aggressively cutting costs and were just focusing on the short term. The winners were the ones that managed to keep focusing on the long-term strategy and investing in research and development. So really, these are times that call for reinvention rather than just survival. Second, you can explain your stakeholders the many different ways in which APIs can bring value to your organization. And the most obvious one is revenues. APIs can help you reach new customer segments, increase adoption, and enable new business models. Today, APIs make up roughly one third of uh, IT companies' revenues. Now, one word of advice here, um, just make sure that you don't make your business case the sole focus of your discussions. Because the truth is that time to return on investment for APIs tends to be long. So make sure that you manage your stakeholders' expectations. And instead of just talking about revenues, talk about opportunities for value generation. And in fact, because there are so many benefits that APIs can bring to your organization, Always make sure that you adjust the pitch to the specific needs of each one of the stakeholders. Find out what their agendas are, what makes them tick. So for example, let's say you're talking to a technical team. When may, maybe uh, you want to highlight the uh, game benefits in terms of increased efficiency or uh, saving time, time and cost for their teams, as well as the accelerated time to market. Now, are you talking to a product team? Well, maybe you want to highlight how sharing data with other partners can help improve their product and reach new channels. And what about business people? As I said before, uh, there's a factor of revenues. We've talked about how it enables digital transformation, but also you may want to highlight innovation opportunities. In fact, more than half of companies uh, are adopting APIs report an increase in innovation. And for us, that was also one of the key drivers to uh, launch our open API program. And three, use data to create a sense of urgency. Data is power. And we soon realized that one of our main tasks coordinating this program was to help people see the need for change. We did so not only by highlighting all these benefits that I explained, but also the risks of not doing anything because people will only move towards the unknown if they genuinely believe that the risk of standing still is greater than of moving forward. There are two very powerful resources here that you can use, which are customer interviews and competitive analysis. Chances are much of the pressure to opening your APIs or to building your APIs is coming directly from customers. If so, Use it, spend the time talking to them, perform interviews and surveys, collect their feedback, and then explain to your stakeholders what your customers' demands and frustrations are. The same goes for competitive analysis. Um, leaders want proof, and they also love success stories. So showing how their competitor has been successful in launching a similar initiative, it is much more compelling than you just talking about, well, your own assumptions, right? 
Um, plus, if you think about it, no leader wants to be left behind competition. And if your competitor is offering an open API that is easy to use and you don't, what is stopping your customer from doing business with them? Now, sorting out those budget constraints and getting your initiative prioritized won't be your only challenges. You'd also have to tackle the organizational culture and structure. And this is especially true for large organizations, where you may find lots of API initiatives that are hard to converge and hard to align. Uh, you may find uh, lots of projects scattered among teams and among regions, each one of them with a different strategy and level of maturity. Even more, the teams that are driving those initiatives may feel you're encroaching on their territory. And that resistance can be even stronger if your legacy systems and processes are somehow driving positive results to them. In our case, we found a complex scenario when we started our program. Back then, we had almost a dozen different initiatives that were uh, linked somehow to APIs. And we had multiple portals for our partners to connect to our APIs. So how do you handle all this complexity of the organizational structure? Well, you can act on two main areas. Basically, you can create a central dedicated team to manage the program as well as setting up a proper governance. First, uh, you can build a ring fence team that will take care of the program coordination and execution. In our case, we created such team and it was led by the innovation department on the business side and the research and development department on the technical side. We started small and we kept growing as the program was also evolving. Now, there is no single formula for this, but on the business side of the equation, you may want people working on strategy, program management, product management, user experience, and even developer relations and marketing. Some organizations will not include developer relations as in their teams until their APIs are live. I personally believe that is a mistake because your developer relations experts have the right skills to help lay the foundations for your program. Moreover, they're the, the glue that binds the technical and the business worlds together. So when it comes to educating your internal stakeholders, they can bring immense value. Now, you don't want this team to be riding solo. If you want to succeed, you need to involve pretty much everyone in the organization. So up and down, across units, and across functions. This is not only to overcome that resistance that I mentioned, but also because it is highly unlikely that you can get all the necessary areas of knowledge in a single team. Now, if you're going to include everyone from the business units and from the corporate functions, how do you handle all that complexity? Well, that is where governance comes to rescue. Um, I feel that uh, governance is one of those buzzwords that we hear pretty much at every API conference, and yet there are very different understandings uh, of what it should mean. Governance, uh, above all, provides everyone with clear direction and a common ground. And in our case, we look at it in four different levels. So first, we have program governance. And that is the basic framework to manage our overall program. Decisions like who should approve what, or how are you going to share the information? How are you going to keep track of the program's progress? Basically, this governance help us make sure that the program execution stays aligned with the objectives and that all stakeholders' inputs are taken into account. This is particularly important in the initial phases of your program. Here, there is no one size fits all formula, but in our case, we created a core team for the execution, a steering committee, and an advisor committee, each one of them with representatives of all the functions and all the units. And above them, we had our vice presidents who were acting as sponsors of the program. Two, you will have platform governance. So you will want to make sure that you have a platform that is stable, that is secure, and that can scale and evolve as your program grows. You will want your platform to provide the best developer experience to your users, as, and at the same time, define the right architecture behind the scenes. And the platform must meet the needs of all the different API stakeholders. We achieve this 
by working with a team of product managers that work together with the development teams for any decision linked to the platform. Three, we have data governance. And this is especially important if you're planning to open your APIs. Uh, because usually when opening APIs, there are concerns about the kind of data that is going to be exposed. So for that, we work with a central committee of data experts um, together with representatives at management level of all the different units. Before we release any API, they review that there are no technical, commercial, or um, legal risks linked to the data that we are going to expose. And four, we have API governance. And this is critical for any organization that may want to industrialize the API design. In our case, our um, API governance board is a community of experts um, in APIs coming from all the different business units that work in a collaborative way to define a common vision and common guidelines and rules for API design. They tackle topics like uh, reutilization, API versioning, request response format, and many more. And they review and approve every single API that is built in the organization to ensure consistency with those guidelines. What is also great about this community is that they balance the power between all the different units because all community members are granted equal voting rights. Now we've seen how to address the challenges of the uh, competing business priorities and the organizational structure. But it is likely that you will also find other roadblocks. And some of them may be linked to the fear of potential risks. This is especially true if you're planning to open APIs for the very first time. So you will have to address some business concerns because some of your stakeholders may be worried that um, opening your APIs may put your business somehow at risk. At risk. Uh, they may believe that developers can use those APIs to build solutions that will eventually compete with some of your core products. You will also have um, security con uh, concerns because if not managed properly, opening your APIs can expose your company to external attacks. And you will also have some performance concerns because if your public APIs write traffic, and well, you hope they will, you have to make sure that your business, your business is ready to cope with that additional volume without impacting your current customers. Now, how can you address all these concerns? First, you can make um, uh, risk management a core part of your program. So by doing things like uh, making sure that security and, and architecture experts are part of the program from the beginning, and thoroughly defining your business models, you can prevent some of these threats. Second, you can uh, get ahead of your stakeholders' concerns. So prepare in advance and get ready for all their what-if objections. Be completely transparent and upfront and explain all the risks that you have identified and the contingency plan. You will win their trust by showing that you've done your homework. And three, you can uh, minimize many of these risks by starting small with a simple minimum viable product. By doing so, you will be able to start testing early, uh, monitoring everything that happens, uh, getting feedback, and learn from there. Uh, so you can then iterate and keep growing by adding on more capabilities. Perhaps the most valuable lesson learned of our journey opening our APIs was do not attempt to achieve everything at once. So uh, pick your battles wisely and take it one step at a time. By starting with a basic use case and a simple minimum viable product, you will also be able to get some quick wins. That is extremely helpful because you will be able to start proving the value of the program. You will be able to get your stakeholders excited about it and gain further support. In our case, we launched our first proof of concept with a limited set of APIs. Uh, they were low risk in terms of the data that we were exposing and were get only APIs. By doing so, we were able to get all the approvals and um, to minimize all those risks. Now, since then, we've been progressively expanding and growing the program by releasing more APIs, including post APIs, and more and more capabilities that are closer to our core business. 
So we've seen that your journey to launching your API initiative is full of challenges and lack of buy-in can doom your project from the very start. So you need to get that support and for that you will have to overcome the challenges linked to the competing business priorities, the organizational culture and structure, and the perceived risk. We've seen some arguments and tactics that can help you get that buy-in. So you can build a strong case by explaining the value of APIs in the current context, the benefits of adopting APIs, and the risks of not doing so. You can also bring everyone on board by defining the right cross-functional, cross-unit governance while relying on a ring fence team for the execution and coordination of the program. And you can minimize those risks that we have discovered by uh, making risk management a core part of your program and starting small with a basic uh, minimum viable product. Now, even if you do all these things, you can expect to make a few more mistakes along the journey and you should be ready to address um, and to embrace failure when, when necessary because chances are a few more unknown roadblocks will pop up. Now, my advice is do not discourage because uh, shaking your organization's foundations doesn't happen overnight. Change, like real change, takes time. But this is definitely an adventure worth taking because there is nothing more exciting than seeing all the great ideas that innovators will come up with using your APIs. And just remember that you are not alone because there is a bunch of API superheroes right here in the API Days community that have gone through some of the same challenges and will be happy to share advice. For us, being part of this community has been a great learning experience so far. And so if you happen to want to talk about anything linked to API strategy, um, I will be more than happy to do so. So uh, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for joining this session and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Maria. Uh, and it, is, it was a really enjoyable presentation, not uh, only because I've been there, done that <laughs> to myself, and I can truly say that that focus on the organization and kind of the change resistant and risk approach is, is, is going to come up even if you didn't plan for it, but it's of course better that you plan for it. And, and especially the feeling of like building some APIs for some months and then kind of having to fight after the fact that, hey, we should really expose these to somebody, <laughs> shouldn't mm -hmm. we? And then you tell, hear this uh, kind of, no, 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 it's too risky. So um, I'm curious to know how is, what do you do daily on this? So like, is it more like going in uh, high level things or kind of just going around and convincing that APIs are actually a good thing or <laughs> something? What do you do? So I will, I will probably differentiate different phases, right? So um, you will face more, more of these challenges when you're studying from the beginning. And I will say that we spent a fair amount of the first uh, year uh, when we were defining the strategy, as you were saying, like probably mm -hmm. knocking at everyone's door and having to explain uh, one by one up and down at the organization, the entire program, understanding what they wanted and iterate. So we were, were making sure that uh, all those concerns and needs were addressed. That was at the beginning. Uh, luckily after that, it gets easier. So as of today, uh, it's not that we're talking to all the business units and all the stakeholders all the time, but what we do is to work with these governance models, models that I was explaining. So we have already defined um, the frequency of the meetings that we have with them. So for example, um, for the uh, platform, there's like a meeting every two weeks in which we review what has been done, we review the roadmap together, and the decisions will be made together. So we make an effort on keeping that constant communication and that constant collaboration thanks to all those levels of governance that I believe are truly critical and I cannot overstate the importance of them. And, and thanks to that, without the efforts needed at the beginning, we can keep that level of, of alignment. Yeah, I, I truly see the point of 
having those constant meetings and keeping it regular, even if it sometimes feels that you don't have anything or mm-hmm. like, do you have anything to say every month or every week or something? But typically just having those meetings will yeah. expose a lot of things that wouldn't come up otherwise. Uh, absolutely. So. And, and it's extremely important that everyone makes the effort uh, to yeah. keep showing up because that is one of the challenges as well, right? Like after some time to keep the engagement of, of all the different stakeholders. We, besides that, uh, communicate about the program through different channels internally. So we have webinars mm-hmm. and, and regular reports that we share. But uh, really, the value of that one-way communications cannot be compared with having these real interactions with, with people. And I would add probably uh, one more point, um, as much as possible, which obviously during these times is not the case, try to have as well face-to-face interactions. So in our case, that ring fence team is uh, split into different locations, and we try to have regular workshops together uh, in the same office, because it is incredible how much progress you can achieve by getting everyone together in the same room and uh, seeing each other face to face compared to you know just having calls or sending emails so that kind of face-to-face interaction is also critical for for success i i totally agree and and we used to have this joke with my colleagues i was in a big retail company and we were living exactly the same situation and and uh, there's a Finnish uh, origin, originated company called Nokia. Maybe somebody has heard about it, but <laughs> they, they have this uh, connecting people slogan. And we used to joke that the, the main uh, purpose of an API development manager or whatever they're called is, uh, is like connecting people. It has nothing to do with connecting systems. <laughs> it's about connecting people. Okay. So I think that that is a very good takeaway from, from this excellent talk, Maria. And, and I was really glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. And I just want to reinforce the message that being part of the API Days community is a great learning and sharing experience. Uh, yeah. so we hope to keep having these, these opportunities in the future. It, it is good. And I actually met with uh, Amadeus, um, some, some lead architect guy <laughs> in 2018. Um, in Paris, uh, API Days Paris, and he he at that time was kind of planning this project and planning that hey we should do something, and it's really good to see that it has happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>